Grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Follow with me as I simply walk through our Holy Gospel for today. Jesus is in the middle of a conversation with the Jewish leaders. Jesus just told them that he is the light of the world and that through him people may have life. He also said that true freedom, true freedom comes from him and from him alone. Now this was offensive to the Jewish leaders. They did not believe that Jesus was the promised Messiah. They did not believe that he is the Son of God. And so they sought to kill him. They could not bear to hear Jesus' word. They could not stand what he had to say. And yet, they claimed to have God as their father. Jesus said, If God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God, and I am here. I came not of my own accord, but he sent me. This is true. God the Father sent his son to redeem mankind. It is as if he said, my son, go. Go and rescue fallen mankind. Redeem them from death. <clears throat> Defeat their enemy, the devil, and make payment for their sin. And it is as if Jesus said, yes, my father, I will go. I will gladly and willingly go to rescue them from sin, death, and the devil. If the Jewish leaders would follow and believe in Jesus, then they would have God as their father. But since they do not follow and believe in Jesus, they come from someone else. Jesus said to them, you are of your father, the devil. Wow. It's not a thing to say if you want to make friends. This is very strong language. And Jesus doesn't waste time. He gets to the heart of the matter and he speaks the truth. He speaks the truth of where they are from. Jesus then goes on to describe the work of the devil. He said that the devil was a murderer from the beginning and has nothing to do with the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character for he is a liar and the father of lies. So since Jesus is the second person of the Trinity, he has always been around and he knows that the devil is a fallen angel. An angel who usurped, attempted to usurp the authority of God. And, and Jesus knows then that the devil tempted Adam and even Eve in the garden to eat the forbidden fruit. Jesus as God knows all things. And so the devil lied to Eve in the garden saying, if you eat from this, if you eat from this fruit, you will not die. That was a lie. And since she ate and her husband also ate, they died that day a spiritual death. And many years later, they died a physical death. The devil, Jesus is right. The devil is a murderer from the beginning. The devil doesn't like the truth of God's word, and so he attacks it even today. The devil's disciples are wolves dressed in sheep's clothing. They claim that the Bible is not God's word, and when they preach from God's word, they preach false doctrine, and they twist the scriptures for what they don't, they, from what they don't, don't really say. They do not preach about sin and about God's grace in Christ Jesus. They do not preach about Jesus as our only Savior. They do not preach the truth of God's word. The devil is their father. Because Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden, 
That's why we have the problems we have today. We live in a fallen world where things just aren't perfect. We suffer from trial and tribulation, from, from sickness, from discord and strife. We sin by what we think, by what we say and do. We listen to Satan's temptations and make idol gods in our own lives. The things that we should not be doing, we find ourselves doing. And the things we should do, we don't find ourselves doing. We have a sinful flesh inside of us that does not like God and His Word. It is an enemy against God's Word. We have that sinful flesh. It will always be among us and in us here on this earth. Therefore, it is always necessary and important for us to repent of our sins it's always important for us to seek God's mercy and to call upon Him, seeking His forgiveness in Christ. We are sinners, but Jesus is sinless. We are children of Adam, and Jesus is human like us, yet He is also God in human flesh. He is both divine and human. He has come to be our Savior Jesus asked his Jewish audience, which one of you convicts me of sin? The point is that Jesus never sinned. He loved his father with his whole heart, soul, and mind, and he loved his neighbor as himself. Jesus cared about the sick, and so he healed them. He gave sight to the blind and hearing to the deaf. He even raised the dead, and all of these miracles clearly prove that Jesus is the promised Messiah, the Son of God. And furthermore, they prove, and so therefore the Jew, the, his Jewish audience could not convict him of any sin. Jesus truly is God in human flesh. But rather what they wanted to do, they sought to do, was to kill him. They did not like the fact that Jesus' popularity was increasing. And the Jewish leaders could not convict Jesus of sin, but what they could do was simply call him names. And so they called him a bad name. They called him a Samaritan. Samaritans were half-breeds. They were half-Jew and half-pagan. They, they did not follow the covenant of Israel. Furthermore, they, called, they identified Jesus as having a demon. Jesus answered them, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. We will all die physically. The wages of sin is death. Death is a reality and we know it. But Jesus is speaking here that one who has faith in Christ will never see eternal death. In Christ alone, we will never die eternally, but we will be with God in heaven eternally. And so Jesus is speaking about an eternal death compared to eternal life. But the Jewish leaders do not get it because they are not of God and they don't know God. And so Jesus said to them, they said to Jesus, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died, as did the prophets. Yet you say, if anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died and the prophets died? Who do you make yourself out to be? You see, Abraham and the prophets certainly died a physical death. But through faith in God's promise, they are alive. They believed in the promise of the coming Messiah. They believed in God's promises of grace and mercy. And so Father Abraham rejoiced to see the coming of the promised Messiah, and he saw it with the eyes of faith and was glad. By faith, Abraham saw God's plan of salvation. And so the Jews said to Jesus, you are not yet 50 years old, 
And have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Now that phrase, I am, was a controversial phrase. The title of God in the Old Testament was Yahweh, which simply means I am. God was, God is, and God will be. And so when Jesus identified himself as the I am, he is simply calling himself, he is identifying himself as the one true God. This was so, so offensive to the Jewish leaders that they took up stones and they wanted to stone and kill Jesus right there and then. But Jesus miraculously hid himself and went out of the temple. Jesus did not want to die, did not want to die a death of stoning that day, but he wanted to die a death of crucifixion on the cross later on. And that's exactly what happened. Later on, Jesus was uh, handed over to Pilate. Pilate sentenced Jesus to death on the cross. And Jesus there even died for his enemies. Even his own enemies he died for. He still loved them and cared for them. <clears throat> now, we learn from this text what we learn is that just as there was opposition against Jesus back then, so also there is opposition against Jesus today. We also learn that Satan is behind much of this opposition. We are in a battle. We live in the church militant. There is no middle ground. Does the fact that we live in a spiritual warfare offend you? Whose side would you like to be on? Whose side are you on? Are you offended that Jesus treated his enemies too harshly? Would you rather see a softer kind of Jesus? What view do you have of God? Who is Jesus to you? Better yet, who are you? Who am I? The Jewish leaders got offended when Jesus spoke the truth. And when God convicts us of sin, we get offended. We get defensive and try to excuse our sin. We don't like it when the preacher preaches the law because it convicts us, us of our sin. And it makes us uncomfortable, but this is good. If we ever deny the reality of our sinful condition, then that's one step away from denying the need for a Savior. And if we ever neglect to confess our sins, then that's one step away from having no need for the forgiveness of sins. It's important for us on a weekly basis as we gather together in the divine service to confess what our sinful nature has done, lay it on the table, and to have God remove it and wash us clean of our iniquities and cleanse us of all our transgressions. Who are you? Who am I? We are poor, miserable sinners in need of a Savior. Who is Jesus? He is the one we need. He died upon the cross as our Savior from sin. And His death was a payment for our sin, a perfect and righteous payment. And He destroyed death by rising on the third day. And He crushed the head of our enemy, the devil. And Jesus won the victory. Who is Jesus in our 21st century? Muslims believe that Jesus was a great prophet. Jewish people believe that Jesus was an unorthodox rabbi. Buddhists regard Jesus as an enlightened person. Scholars acclaim him for Jesus' wonderful ethics. Jehovah Witnesses describe Jesus as an exalted divine being. Mormons believe that Jesus is simply a God with a small g. The New Age movement believes that Jesus is, has a divine energy that everyone can possess. And Christian science teaches that Jesus and Christ are two separate identities. 
Who is Jesus? Many people believe that Jesus is merely an example to follow, that he is simply a moral teacher, and that his death on the cross is of no importance. They also hold that Jesus was merely a martyr for the sake of truth, that Jesus being preached in pulpit after pulpit is Jesus the coach, the lover, the therapist, the enabler, and the Jesus in your heart. They don't want a Jesus that is offensive to the world. And you preach a Christ who was crucified, and that is offensive. Who is Jesus? Scripture is very clear that he is God and man. Come for us and for our salvation. Long before his human birth, Jesus existed as the eternal God. He is the first and the last. John 1.1 1, 1 says that the word was not only with God, but it says, and he was God. And John 1.14 says then that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So the second person of the Trinity became flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. He was named Jesus, for he will save his people from their sin. Who is Jesus? He was human like us in every way, hands, feet, eyes, but he was without sin. And his mission was to fulfill the law perfectly, and he did it in our place and on our behalf. And secondly, he came to be the sufficient sacrifice for our sin. And he did it in our place and on our behalf. Only God can do that. Only God can fulfill the law. Only God can overcome our enemy death and the devil. And that's exactly what Jesus did. It was necessary for him to be God in human flesh. Who are you? Who am I? We are baptized lambs, redeemed with the blood of Christ. And we rejoice that Jack and Olivia were brought into God's kingdom, saved from all their sins, washed away of all their iniquities, covered with the robe of Christ, and we rejoice with them. Who are you? You have God as your Father. Therefore, through faith, you love Jesus. You hear God's word, and you believe it. You hear his word of forgiveness, and you trust in it. You he hear his word preached from the pulpit, and you believe in it. Christ's life-giving word is connected this morning to bread and wine, and from this altar he gives us his body and blood for the forgiveness of all our sins. Yes, there is the forgiveness of sins in Christ. God does have grace and mercy toward you in Christ. Yes, there is a battle out there, but continue to confess Christ as your Savior, even if it means persecution. Whose side are you on? You are with Christ, and you are on His side. You are baptized. You believe in Christ as your Savior, and you receive His gifts of life and salvation. Like Abraham, you see him with the eyes of faith and believe that he is your Savior. The gospel comes to you and it gives you peace and comfort that the world cannot give. And as a response, you give God thanksgiving and praise and you love the neighbor. Yes, there will be a day when we will walk through the valley of the shadow of death, but we, we, we will fear no evil for we know that Christ won victory for us and that he has opened heaven for us. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus and a life everlasting. Amen.